everyone, and welcome back to Storytime with Stuffy. It's Christmas, Christmas edition. edition. Today, we are going to be reading the Jesus Storybook Bible. And the, oh, we're unwrapping a book. And what? Picking from the hat. And what book did we read yesterday? The Jesus Storybook Bible. No, <laughs> what, book, what book did we unwrap? The Meaning of Christmas. The, the Glorious News. Glorious News. And what story do we read in the Jesus Story Bible? Daniel. We read about Daniel. We've also read about Isaiah. Yeah, but not yesterday. Yeah. Okay, so today in the Jesus Story Bible, we are reading God's Messenger, found in Jonah 1, chapter 1 to 4, or Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. And Hebrews. God had a job for Jonah, but Jonah didn't want it. Go to Nineveh, God said, and tell your worst enemies that I love them. No, said Jonah. Those are bad people doing bad things. Exactly, said God. They have run far away from me, but I can't stop loving them. I will give them a new start. I will forgive them. No, said Jonah. They don't deserve it. I'll run away, Jonah said to himself. Far away, so far away that God won't be able to find me. Then I won't have to do what God says. It's a good plan, he said, because as far as he knew, it was a good plan. But of course, it wasn't a good plan at all. It was a silly plan. Because you can run away from God, but he will always come and find you. Jonah went ahead with his not very good plan. One ticket to not Nineveh, please, he said, and boarded a boat sailing in the very opposite direction of Nineveh. Well, it wasn't long before a fierce wind blew and the boat started to lurch and pitch and roll and everyone started turning green. Jonah sat bolt upright in his bed. You see, the first thing that went wrong with Jonah's not very good plan was that God sent a big storm after him. The sailors couldn't sail their ship properly. We're sinking, they screamed, and started throwing everything overboard. Suitcases, food, whatever they could find. By now, Jonah knew that the storm was his fault. Throw me in instead, he shouted to the sailors, and the storm will stop. The sailors went short. It's the only way you can be saved, Jonah cried. And so one, two, three, splash. No sooner had Jonah hit the water than the waves grew calm, the wind died down, and the storm stopped. Just then, when Jonah thought it was all over, when he was sure he was going to drown, God sent a big fish to rescue him. The fish swallowed Jonah whole with one big gulp. Jonah must have thought he died. It was so dark in there like a tomb. But then he smelled the rotting food and felt the slimy seaweed and knew he wasn't dead. He was in the belly of the fish. Sitting there in the darkness for three whole days, Jonah had, sp had plenty of time to think. Pretty soon, he realized his plan was, well, a very silly plan indeed. He was sorry for running away. He prayed to God from inside the great fish and asked God to forgive him. After three days, the fish spat Jonah safely onto a sandy beach. Just then, Jonah heard someone calling his name. And this time, Jonah said, yes. He went straight to Nineveh and told everyone God's wonderful message. Even though you've run far from God, he can't stop loving you, Jonah told them. Run to him so he can forgive you. The people of Nineveh listened to Jonah and they started loving God. They learned to do what God said and to stop running away from him, just like Jonah. Many years later, God was going to send another messenger with the same wonderful message. Like Jonah, he would spend three days in utter darkness. But this messenger would be God's own son. He would be called the Word because he himself would be God's message. God's message translated into our own language. Everything God wanted to say in the world, to the whole world in one person. Then, why was Jonah swallowed by a fish? Uh, and how long was he in the fish's belly? Uh, three days, and um, so he could get transported, and he had uh, to uh, think, he had lots of time to think what he was going to do, and um, he uh, prayed in the fish's belly too. Okay. Anyway. Ah! 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 Why was Jonah, you did that? You did that. You're such a bum. Why was Jonah afraid to go to Nineveh? Because the people of Nineveh were bad and they were wrong and they did wrong things in the Lord's eyes and Jonah thought that they should be, you know, wiped off the face of the earth. Now you pick a book. There's only four left. Pick them. Okay. And Amy and Rapsen. And I pick that too. Oh, 
Samantha's favorite story by Hisako Oiki and Ivan Ganschev. That's a Russian name. Ivan Ganschev. One cold day in December, a fox was walking in the forest. As he looked at the snowy trees, he remembered that it would soon be Christmas. Then he heard something. He sniffed the air and looked around. There, fast asleep against the tree, was Santa Claus. He was snoring. Oh my goodness, thought the fox. Santa Claus has come early this year. I'd better go and tell everyone he's here. So he hurried off to tell all the other animals that lived in the forest. When they heard the news, the animals hopped and ran and scampered and flew to the tree. A squirrel chattered excitedly, and Santa Claus slowly stretched, yawned, and then opened his eyes to see the faces of a dozen little creatures. Why are you here? They asked him. Is Christmas going to be early this year? Asked the fox. I'm sorry if I've worried you, my friend, said Santa. I went for a long hike this morning to get in shape for Christmas Eve, but I guess I walked until I got too tired. Maybe all those heavy presents will be too much for me to deliver this year. The animals looked alarmed. Does that mean there won't be a Christmas anymore? Asked the fox. No, 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 said Santa in a kindly voice. Christmas hasn't got to do anything. Christmas hasn't got anything to do with me. Sit down and I'll tell you all the story of the first Christmas. It happened long, long ago in a faraway place called Bethlehem. Some shepherds were watching over their sheep in the fields outside the town. It was very quiet and still. Suddenly, a beautiful bright star appeared in the sky. The shepherds heard a voice saying, Do not be afraid. I have good news for you all. Today in the town of Bethlehem, the Christ child has been born. God has sent his son to show what God's love is like. Follow the star to his stable. You're the shepherds followed the star over hills and through valleys, across bridges, and past little villages. The shepherds and their sheep stopped too, for there in the stable was a baby, lying in a manger. The shepherds knew that this was the Son of God, and they knelt down and prayed. And that is what happened in Bethlehem when the Christ child came. It's my favorite story because it reminds me why we are so happy at this time of year. Love was the gift God gave to us on the first Christmas, and it still is, you know. And this love is far better than any presents I can ever deliver. Santa Claus put his hands in his pockets and looked slowly around the circle of animals with a kind and happy smile upon his face. How silly we've been, said the fox, to think that Christmas was only about presents. So now you know, said Santa. But oh, come on, you're right that it's almost Christmas. Let's go back to my place and get things ready. All the animals followed as Santa Claus ran off toward his house. He didn't even look tired anymore because he had remembered how much fun his work was going to be. The animals stayed at Santa's house until Christmas Day and helped him every way they could. Of course, the reindeer helped by going out with him to deliver the presents the night before. After a fine Christmas dinner, Santa gave every animal a present. And as they sat around the fireplace later in the day, they all asked to hear Santa's favorite story again. It was a very special Christmas Day for everyone. Santa was sure that he had the nicest time of all, though, because he remembered that the best, best present ever is Christmas itself. That was a nice cute little book, and the illustrations are really cool. I that was definitely done with Blood of Color. So the expert. Well, you can tell it looks like this don't want what was Blood of Color. All right, now it is time. Hat of I wonder. so that you can pick it so that Ben you yes. an activity. Make make a okay. oh, um, make a food face. Okay, make a pan Palmander. Palmander. Okay.
for watching. Bye.